hello welcome back to my channel thank you for coming back um, and as always thank you for the support so today I thought I would play with another one of these 3d embossing folders um, and this is the precious poinsettia uh, so let me just pop that one out of the way um, so I thought I'd do something different today and make a little box uh, okay uh, so I'm going to start with some just some multi-purpose card and I'm actually going to cut this wider than I need so I'm going to go so it's five and a half I'm going to go to six and a half by five and a half okay And I'm going to pop that into my embossing folder like so and so the sandwich I need today is going to be the base plate and the magnetic plate and the plastic shim so I'll just pop those through So yesterday, uh, not yesterday, the day before when I did the um, other one, I only used, I didn't use the magnetic shim, um, but I still got a really deep impression. So my machine is quite powerful. So, um, you know, it's, you guys know what your machines. So if you need a little bit more pressure, obviously just pop that in. Um, so I'm bringing in the uh, mat. So this means that I'm going to be playing with the inks again. So like I said the other day, you know, I'm not the best person to watch on inky techniques. I am still um, practicing and growing with that side of things. Um, there are dozens of other more you know, sort of tutorials on YouTube that will give you better advice on inking than I will. Okay, but this is just the sort of serving suggestion that I've come up with to use these folders. Um, and I'll be honest with you, um, embossing folders, I absolutely love them. They are like my favourite thing because I can see so much possibilities with them. But when I get them, I really have to force myself to use them because I don't think I use them as as much as I could do. So, um, yeah, so I'm not... I, I love using them, but I need to use them more and, and I'll get more out of them. Um, that's, you know, something that I know... Um, I need to do. So today I'm going to be using um, the opaque pigment um, in, um, ink pads from Spectrum Noir from Crafters Companion and I'm using Chinese Red and I'm using Plum Jam. So I'm using the uh, round applicator for the Chinese Red. You can use your square whichever you feel comfortable with and I've got a finger dauber for my Plum Jam. So what I'm going to do first of all, and I'm just going to put a bit of tissue there, um, and it's just to get as much ink onto this folder as I can. Um, this is not really a, a blendy sort of demo, so um, for my purpose today I do need as much ink on as I can. Obviously um, I still want the definition and everything, so um, I'm just going to do my best to get as much ink on as I can and I'll be honest with you when I did these in practice it didn't come up as nice and red as this so I'm already super happy so this is the um, Chinese red so this is what I'm going on with first of all I think when I did practice with this I might have not had that magnetic shim in because I just watched um, I think it was Michelle last night and she was saying um, the extra shim so this is looking lovely so because obviously it's a poinsettia I just want that as red so I can get it and the reason why I did this a little extra on the sides is because even when you put um, tissue on it to sort of if you put your hands on it the ink's going to come off on your hands basically and move it around where you don't want it to but even with the tissue I find it sort of takes it off a little bit which is quite annoying there we go, so we've got this lovely red poinsettia there. Right, so let's put that one down for a second. Grab my dauber with this plum jam. 
and then I'm just going to come in over those that center there and just these edges where I think it's going to be a little darker and the reason why I'm using the dauber is just because it's a little bit easier to put the color where you want it to be like I say it's not I'm not being really precise just because I it's not really going to make a lot of difference by the time we finish with this so just a little bit of plum jam and I'm just going to pick up a little bit more of our Chinese red I'm just going to go and move that around a little bit just make sure them edges are quite nice and red Okay, so I'm happy with that and I'm going to bring in some clear embossing powder. This is a Sweet Dixie one. So I'm just going to chuck that all the way over the top. And a piece of paper here. Oh, that's a delivery note, so that's fine. I'm just going to put that on. Just going to move everything around, uh, the powder around just to get that all covered if you see bits like this you can just scoop it back up don't touch it if you can help it because it will take whatever powder you've already got on off but ideally you should get something that looks like that sort of milky coloured so I'm just going to pop that back in there and you can see I've hardly used any back on there. Just give it a bit of a blow because you don't really want that stuck to the mat. I'm just going to bring my heat tool in. So this is a um, Ranger one so it's quite quiet which is the reason why I got that. So I'm just going to wait for that to heat up and then you should see this will turn nice and glossy. Just starting to go, and the redder this is, um, the redder it looks once it turns. So, just such a lovely effect. I'm just gonna move that on, just making sure I hit all of those edges. And you may have to because it's um, embossed quite so deep because it's a 3D embossing it. Uh, you may have to sort of angle your um, tool to get to certain parts of it because of the um, raised, raised bits. It's quite satisfying to do a nice big piece like this. You know, usually it's just the sentiment or something that you're, you're embossing or a small image, but to do something large like this is quite satisfying. And that's all of it. Before I do anything else, what I want to do is bring in a little bit of my um, gilding wax. I'm just trying to see what colour this one is. Empire Gold. Okay, so I've just got a bit of a uh, cut off of for, for, um, gold mirror card. And what I'm going to do, I've got my bit of tissue there, is just go in over these centres. A little white, not too much of a white because it will take it quite quickly straight off. 
and then I'm just going to come along some of these edges here and if you go in a bit heavy with this it's quite nice because you can buff it off you know obviously if you do that straight away if you waited it would probably set this stuff frightens me a little bit because it's <laughs> It gets everywhere. I had this uh, incident with the silver one one time where uh, I used it and uh, it uh, somehow ended up on the front of my hands, on the back of my hands. Oh my god, it was a nightmare. But that's me, it's not the stuff, it's just uh, my clutziness. There we go. So I'm just putting that round those there. Put that away before I can get into any dramas with it. And wipe my hands off. So now we can just put that away. I'll give that a little clean up later. And I'm going to bring in my trimmer. So let's get this trimmed down. So what I'm going to do is just go around the edges and then I'll just make sure it's nice and square because I do want it as a square, as a more or less exact square for the box that I'm using. So let's have a look. So what have we got? We've got five and a quarter. Just under five and a quarter, I believe. and a quarter is absolutely fantastic okay so um, I'm gonna bring put that to one side for a second um, so I do need that in um, I'm going to take a piece of gold miri let's grab my arm out and I want to cut that to eight by eight And I've got a piece of 12 by 12 pearl gold um, and this came from um, a recent 12 by 12 pad that's glitter and pearl I did see that they um, did have them back on recently um, just at the end of birthday week so if you can get hold of it I know it was slightly more than what I paid for it because I got one with two of us free the rose gold and silver free um, but it was, I think it was like £30 for, for them um, and it's worth every penny, honestly, it is. The, the glitter card in it is amazing um, and these pearl cards are nice as well for boxes. Okay, so um, as you know, I've got the um, smaller hunky-dory board. It's a little bit of a pain because it just means I have to keep rotating. So um, I'm going to be using the box base for the pearl um, and I'm going to be um, scoring on my board it's five inches so it's three inches in. I'm just going to turn that over and complete that line on that side and then rotate that round straight down the five again turn it over and again down the five, turn it over, on the five, and then lastly there, on the five, and oops, on the five, and it doesn't make a difference to it that I've turned it over, it still um, will burnish really well. And then with the mirror card, I'm going to come in on the lid side. Uh, I'm scoring at one inch all the way around again, rotating that. So, pop that one out of the way. Let's 
need to see it for a second. So I'm just going to choose. I'm going to finish in towards that. This is slightly brighter on this side. It's double sided, so it doesn't make a big, big difference which way you go. So I'm just going around finishing all of those scores. Washing them down nice and flat so the better you burnish them the better the effect you're going to have okay and I'll just bring this other one in do the same on there just gently because that is let's just pull out a little bit of tissue let's see if that helps It's just that my scoring tool was just scratching the mirror a little bit on that first one, so just got a little bit of tissue roll there just to take the edge off this tool. When I did the um, mock up of this, um, I did it with white cards, so didn't realise this would cause a problem. that that's no problem for okay so i'm going to bring my big ugly scissors in we'll work on the base first of all so i'm just going to cut down to my my score line and then cut a triangle out and some people like to do so it's both this way i tend to just go round um I don't know why I do it that way but if you prefer to do it the other way you're still going to end up with the same result as long as you've got two tabs for each end and the reason why um, we cut the V is just so that if you don't cut the V what it does is it it stands and sometimes it can just come over that edge if you cut that V out then what you can do is just manoeuvre that down so that your box is flat at the top so that's that one and I'll just go ahead and do the same on here it's a little harder to see and look, let's turn it over sorry it's gonna reflect for you so I'm just gonna do the same on here and again just go around that line and that bridge out. Oops, let's try and cut straight. And the reason why I did these boxes in gold is I just thought it would save me matting, uh, you know, a matting layer really. So this is going to be my first layer. That's what looks really nice. Okay. So I'm going to turn it over to um, the side that we're going to have on the outside and I'm just going to bring in some super sticky tape and I'm just going to pop a piece on each of these corners and then I'll go around and burnish that down. I am going to be using my um, my glue uh, but I just want this red uh, super sticky red liner tape just to give me that bit of instant stick and then obviously the PVA can take its time to give me a, a really good strong stick that's going to stick for a very long time okay so I'm just going to start on this one first of all using my tacky glue and put a nice amount on because obviously it's in this thin dispenser so and then I'm just going to bring that round actually let me just put a little bit on that tape just to give me a bit of manoeuvrability time I'm just bringing that round so that it's flush on this side here and straight at the top okay 
And I'm just going to carry on doing that all the way around. And it's a little bit hard to show you on camera, so I do apologise if my hands get in the way. I'm just going to put that to there. Press that down and in. And again. And if you, um, if it's still sort of not sticking straight away, what you can do is just put um, a little peg on it or um, if you've got any sewing clips, they tend to be quite good for holding it as well. This one's a little trickier just because the box has already started to take shape. Just go around again line it up on that edge and then make sure that's right there. okay and then I just go along and just press in a little just to straighten that crease there just training the card to go where I want it to go okay so that's nicely stuck down okay and then I'm going to come in and do exactly the same on this one Obviously, we're working on a smaller scale. Again, just putting some red liner tape on each of those corners. Obviously, because of this, um, you definitely would not use your um, all-purpose on this. Okay, so just get that nice and straight. And then straight again. I think it's a little easier with a smaller edge box because you can see over the top of it. sure why there's that edge because it was 8 by 8 all the way around it's nice and flush so okay what I'll do is just go in with my knife she says let's go that way Just gonna match it. So, to the okay, so that's messier than I would have liked. And it didn't do that on the other one, so now I'm a little worried it won't fit. But it does. Okay. might mess up things later on that's what I'm worried about I'm 
Okay, so I think that should be okay. Right, so um, I'm just going to grab the pad for um, the decorating. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to be honest. I did just go and make another lid. Um, I'm not quite sure why that other one didn't line up quite well. Um, sorry, dogs decided to bite because there was the delivery man at the door. Yeah, so I did, just did go and make another lid just to, um, because that other one where I cut it, I could just see where it was a bit uneven and it wasn't the look I wanted from the box. So, okay, so the decoration that I'm going to use is going to be from the Tis the Season, purely because it's got quite a lot of red in. Um, and obviously we're using that red poinsettia and I was torn between this one with the berries on um, but I think what I'm going to do is use this one here because it's got a lot more green on and I want to use a green bow okay I'm going to bring my trimmer back in so the sides of our box are, well our box is, base is 3 by 6 so I'm going to go ahead and cut my first layer at 2 inches under the 3, I think I might need to go a little deeper but let me just check that and then 2 notches under the 6, I've got a feeling I might have needed to go 2 notches under the 6, let's just pull that out yeah so the actual width the two notches under the three is fine but i just need to go four notches under the six okay and then i'm going to do the same on this one so two notches under the three and then one two three four notches Actually, I'm going to keep those berries. One, two, three, four. Notches under the six. And then again with this one. Actually, what I'm going to do on this one, I'm just going to take a piece two notches under the one. Because it might be nice to try and keep those bells. And then two notches under the three. We should still see what they are. Yeah. So one, two, three, four notches under the six. And then we'll keep the berries. One, two, three, four notches. So those are our four, four base pieces. So we have got this piece here, which should fit. Our lid, yeah. So that just needs to be two notches under the six because that is the lid. So we've got one of those, keep the red, two of those. Well, let's decide where we want. So if I go to two notches under the one for that, actually. I think I'm going to get into detail there. So I'm trying to pick pieces that have got quite a nice bit of um, red and green in. That's that one. And then. That doesn't look very straight again. And it's not. That's how it looks, so. So I think that piece is okay. I think what it is with this trimmer is sometimes I don't butt it right up to the top correctly. So let's see. So if I so that is straight. So 
it's a shame that I haven't got that bit there, but we've still got a nice bit of red there. A little bit of red and green on there. It's more important that our, our layers look right, so let's just check all of those. You know, sometimes I just have these days where no, it's fine. Panicking over nothing. Right, so let's go ahead and start to assemble this. So I'm going to start with my base. Um, I am going to go around with that door back, and I think we'll go around with that Chinese red in the water ones just so that it dries a little quicker so I want the red one stop it there okay. so I'm just going to go around this edge just to bring that red in as well And if you wanted to, you could go over a bit further, really accentuate that. I'm not going to do that today. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and get that done on all of these. It just makes it look like there's another layer there because you've got that red coming through so it just hints at another colour and, and also it takes away that white line of the edge of the actual paper itself. It's quite a satisfying little crunchy noise as well. Okay, so I just went around and did the same on those ends as well. So let's get started. So I'm just going to bring in my tacky glue. Just going to put a nice amount all the way over, especially in those corners. And then just pop that on nice and centrally. And then what I'll do is I'll just work on the opposite side purely because then there's a little bit of pressure just holding that one down. And again, just put the glue all over. You can see it just picks up that little hint of red there, which is fabulous. Okay, I'll leave that one on there while I ink this one up. I mean, glue this one up. So again, just coming in with this glue. To the side, so I've got bells there. Just pop 
that one in nice and straight. Just going to do the same on here. So, just going in with the tacky glue again, popping that on nice and straight. And it's just worth checking if you've got paper that's got um, a design on. See if there is a right or a wrong way. A lot of the times there's not. Um, but it's just that when you that one day you don't check or be the one day, then there is a pattern and it looks... It will still look fabulous, but it will just be... It will annoy you because you will know. Nobody else would notice most likely that the design was upside down but you would know oh, I this last piece this side. and obviously um, just be aware of the lid going down so um, you need to make sure your design is that way down Okay, so here we go up to them, nice and snug. You see, that's looking really nice. Just a little bit of glue under there. I can go around and just make sure if there's any loose ends or bits popping up, I can pop a little bit of glue on when I'm finished. Okay, so let's just pop that to the side. And then we can start working on our top. So I need to bring my trimmer back in. And this is six by six box. So I've got an off piece of this paper again. I'm just picking what's going to look nicest around the edge. And I think it's going to be there. So I'm just going to go two notches under the two. And two notches under the two again there and we'll just pop that on make sure that's nice just going to take another notch off each side so three notches under the six going to come in with another piece of gold card. I think this was five and a quarter, wasn't it? So, so I'm just going to go five and six notches. I'm going to try that. I may change it to six. I just want the finest of boards around this just to bring back in. That's fine. Pop these bits out of the way. So what I need to do now, I'm going to go around both of these with this um, Chinese red again. All the way around. That one. 
those white edges and this is perfect because it's actually you know, the same color that we did it with only in we did it in opaque but it was still a Chinese red so color matched perfectly And when you, you know, obviously I only embossed this the one time, but you don't have to just do it the once. You could go in and like triple emboss it, so you do that three times. Um, you might need to add a bit more of a clear ink to do that. Um, but once you've done it three times, it's like a solid, it would be like a kitchen tile. That's what it would feel like. And then what you can do once you've got it to that stage is actually crack it and then ink into the cracks, which is a really lovely look as well if you're going for, you know, that sort of thing. So I'm just going to use um, this super strong tape just coming down from all of these corners, just purely because with heat in the card, it has actually sort of stretched it. So I just want to make sure that that does go down nice and flat. Um, so obviously we're going to use the PVA glue but um, trouble with the PVA is obviously it does go dry, you know, pick up very quickly. Um, oops. But, um, you know, if the paper were to sort of uh, buckle a little bit before it had set, then there is that chance that it might um, glue it unevenly. So I'm just going to peel the back ends off all of these. So just it just becomes a little bit more difficult once the card has been embossed. So obviously I can't press down on it too hard because I don't want to lose that definition in the card so I can't burnish it as well as I usually would so I'm just uh, getting these edges off in with my tacky glue and this coverage all over I am just going to put the black tape just to give me a bit of wiggle time just there and then we're just going to go this down now. Again, tacky glue all over. And I'm going to have my box. So I'll we'll have our box this way. There. Nice smooth down. And then this one, I'm actually just going to in a little hunky guillotine. I'm just going to take a slither of gold off that end because it's just the tiniest bit chunkier than I want. And then, so then lastly, well not lastly actually, there's a couple of other things. I'm going to bring in some AD foam. Oops. Down. We're nearly done. 
展开。For a little bit of maneuverability and let's get to have a bit of extra tack as well once that goes off. And then we can decide which way up we want that to go. I think with the just slightly off to the right. Left? Yeah no right. I was right. And then I've got this really nice bow. This is a, a wire edge ribbon. Had it for absolute yonks. Um, got it from sort of a pound shop sort of ages ago. So like a really long time ago. So I'm just going to grab myself a little bit of 3D glue gel for this. Just going to pop a little bit on the back, pop that into the corner. Then stick the pin back in there. Okay, and then the last thing to do is just to um, make our sentiment so i'm just going to grab my stamp platform okay so i've got my stamp platform there also bought in these gnome kissing gate stamp just for the sentiment got a little bit of white card there Let's pop that underneath and I'm going to use May All Your Christmas Wishes Come True. So we'll pop that on like so. Okay. And I'm using the waterproof die just purely because that's what I've got to hand. it is. Right, let's try it again. Just get a bit of press down. Let's not hit and let's see. Oh, I think it's to do with my leg. There we go. So I fixed, because I keep this stamping platform down on the floor next to me sometimes these legs fall off um so i did go around because that i still haven't found that one um i did go around and put all the legs back on and i think that one was just a little stiff so that's why it wasn't doing that say properly do is just make that into a kind of a tag shape so we can go
thing. And then I get across there. going to go under there so um, I think I will use a little bit of tacky glue I'm just going to put a nice blob under there and I'm just going to pop that there so you can see that through the ribbon okay so um, sorry it's been a bit of a a second really but um yeah so that's a little box we've managed to create in the end today um nice on the inside too um it's quite nice and deep so you can get something decent in it a scarf that sort of thing um so next time i come back it's going to be with hunky dory um i was hoping to get another one done today but i think it's just got a little bit late um so it's not going to be today um so I will try and get that done tomorrow um, and added on at some point. Um, I have got a new kit, um, so I'm quite, you know, quite uh, happy to show you that one. Um, but I've also got that other book to work through as well. Um, once I've done that hunky dory, I'll come back to um, Crafter's Companion. Not quite sure we what yet. I might have a little break from these embossing folders. Um, I might come back with something else. So we'll see what happens anyway um until then um take care of yourselves thank you so much for watching you really i, I really can't tell you enough how, how much it you know i really do love the fact that you guys have been supporting me um but take care of yourselves see you soon bye bye